Hi, I'm Brett Smith with Adventure Smith on YouTube. Today, we're going to be taking this black tip and making it trim and neutral. Today we are taking another crack at trimming out and making this black tip DPV neutral in the water. Um, so right here in front of us, we have got our tools of the trade that we're gonna need to uh, get this job done. A um, Couple things you might not have thought of, uh, we're gonna go through all of it. So some people like to use the high density foam to uh, basically get the, get the tail end to be able to float uh, horizontally in the water rather than you know going straight down vertically and uh, the solution that I found is actually a pretty cheap one you can go to your Academy Sports, Lowe's uh, sometimes you can even find them at TJ Maxx and just get the uh, foam floor mats um, I don't think that they're marine grade uh, flotation foam but I will tell you that they are uh, densely compressed and I've been down to 100 feet with mine and have not seen any issues. So basically you'll get you a square of this, which I have already taken the liberty of pre-cutting the square to make it a little easier to work with for the video. Um, and obviously for the cutting, you're gonna need a good pair of scissors, a Sharpie or some way of marking it, uh, some good super glue to uh, attach it to the shroud and we'll get into that um, And of course, we're going to need a t25 Torx head and driver uh, To remove the caps on the inside of the uh, of the nose cone here and we will also film that uh, coming up um, so to prep the foam for uh, Adhesion we've got some brake clean kind of act as a degreaser a uh, couple paper towels um, that'll be good for the brake clean and also later on I'll show you a trick to uh, keep the uh, lead shot from becoming a problem uh, got some clean rags clean paper towels of course we have the batteries that go in the DPV it wouldn't do you very much good to try and make this thing trim and neutral without the batteries that you will be using in it for that matter it wouldn't do you very much good to do it any other way than you would actually be diving it because if I were to trim this thing out, make it neutral, and uh, everything look great on it, and then I decided to add a light or a GoPro or anything really, then you're going to start throwing things off and uh, you'll have to basically redo this process over again. Um, also, we have some uh, clean rags and a towel and you'll see why that's important later. As a disclaimer, I have already um, messed with this a little bit out of the box. So uh, as far as there are some things that kind of go in here that I've removed, the saltwater trim plate, it attaches inside of the uh, DPV body. Uh, also, there are tire weights, the sticky adhesive kind, on the inside of the tube when it comes from the factory. Normally these weights, as far as my experience has been, are down by the tail end, which obviously makes the tail end a lot heavier. Um, so immediately what I do is I remove those adhesive weights and I move them to the nose end and uh, we'll get a shot of that right now. These adhesive weights right here, and they're all the way around the inside. Normally these are down at the bottom towards the tail end and which makes the tail end very heavy. So what I do is immediately I remove those weights from the tail end and put them as far forward as I can on the nose end um, without interfering with any of the uh, sealing areas or the uh, battery placement. Uh, so that uh, kind of moves the weight forward on the DPV and helps it to want to try to trim out before we even get started. Um, also, I have removed some shot from out of the uh, nose cap here. So there have been some things done with the DPV prior to this video 
However, it's not spot on and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit off or a lot a bit off. The steps that I'm going to show you in this video are the same. Um, it's basically a lot of trial and error, but I'm going to show you how to go about it. And then it's basically a rinse and repeat until you get it right. Whew. That's a little chilly. <laughs> Woo. <sighs> okay. So the first thing we want to do is get a baseline on where we're at. So we've got everything loaded up. We've got the batteries in it. It's the way it's going to be dove. Um, so we're going to just put it in the water and see what happens. As you can see, it is just a wee bit floaty. So we'll have to add some shit lead shot back into the nose to get it to come down just a little bit. It doesn't need much. It's real close. Like I said, I've already kind of messed with this before. Um, however, it's not quite where I want it yet. So we're going to put a little bit of lead shot back in and uh, we'll see how that goes. A little trick you can use uh, without having to get out of the water or keep doing it is if it's a little bit positive, you can find some things to clip on and actually clip them onto the nose and then basically replicate that same weight. Uh, with lead shot once you figure out how much you need and uh, we'll go from there uh, So shouldn't take too much here, but we're gonna see what happens So, two. All right, so we narrowed it down. We know we need about This much weight to put into the nose cone so We have some lead shot that's uh, left over from uh, tinkering around with some other DPVs and we're going to use this to replicate this weight and we'll put it into the nose cap and then we'll come back and do another in water test. So this is why it's important to have the towel in the rag because obviously whenever I pull the cap off of this I want it to be dry so then that way water doesn't get down into the body of the tube and um, possibly down where the battery connectors are and the circuit boards at the bottom for the motor controls. You don't want water and stuff in there. Uh, so that's why it's important to have you some towels and rags, something to keep things dry and clean. So in order to get into the cap, this is the, uh, this is the nose cone, so it pulls off the top. Flip it over, and in order to get in here, you've got four T25 Torx screws that are holding two steel plates in. And you need to remove these screws so you can get down to where the lead shot is. So you can reach in, grab the caps out. And there you have it. There's all your lead shot in there. Now we need to replicate the weight of this clip and uh, we can actually go slightly heavier than this but not too much because this was pretty close to what we needed. Before we get going these two holes right here that kind of line up with the uh, cuts and the plates they need to be filled with something and that is why partially why we have paper towels so then that way we can fill those holes with the paper towel and uh, that way the lead shot won't get in there um, if you if you let lead shot get down in these little holes here uh, when you flip the cap back over to put it back on the DPV body it's uh, it's gonna spill some lead balls down in there some lead shot and um, it's not going to be pretty. So just go on ahead and fill those up with some paper towel there. And that keeps that from being an issue. Is kind of place these screws back in. You don't have to screw them down all the way, but it also fills up these holes. Um, I've had instances where I've been doing this and <laughs> the lead shot gets down in the holes of uh, where the screws are supposed to go and then you have a problem. So what we have here is a scale. <laughs> so we're able to uh, kind of replicate the weight of 
the clip. We'll see how much this weighs. Let's see, it's looking about like four ounces or so. We'll go with four. So we need to add ourselves four ounces of lead shot. A little over four because the cap weighs some. So I'm just gonna kinda put these in a little bit at a time until we get to four ounces. All right, so we've got it sitting at about five ounces. And I do that because Number one, the cap weighs a little bit. And number two, we did want it to be slightly heavier than the clip itself. Um, so we've got, the, uh, we've got the plate put back on. Everything's leveled out, so there's no gaps. Uh, so no uh, free-flowing lead shot coming out of the nose. So now we're going to put this back on the DPV and do another in-water test. All right. So now we've got our lead shot added to the nose. We'll just see how it floats. That is one thing. If you notice, when I stuck this in the water, had some bubbles come out of the handle. Whenever you're doing this test, you want to make sure that there's not any kind of uh, bubbles uh, trapped somewhere i mean number one you want to make sure that there's not any bubbles coming from the dpv which would indicate a leak uh, that's not good either but you don't want trapped air in some of the pockets that can form on this thing because that can give you kind of a false positive um, to let you know or it, it will essentially give it some some lift and you don't want uh unnecessary lift whenever you're testing this thing. All right, so the test is, is the lanyard should be able to kind of pull this tail end down some, which it does. And the front end here should be slightly buoyant, ever so slightly. And that works the same in salt and in fresh water. Um, so right now, uh, the diving that we're planning on doing is in freshwater caves in Florida. So, uh, we're testing this DPV in a freshwater pool. There's no chlorine or anything. This is well water. And, uh, so far it looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So super excited. Uh, the last time I did this, it took forever. <laughs> So, as we stated before, this thing was uh, pretty close to being neutral and trim uh, from the get-go. However, it's the same process no matter if it's super negative or super positive or just way out of trim. Uh, it's the same thing. You're going to have to have a place to test it where you can submerge it in the water um, and have it kind of free from any outside influences. Uh, you don't want it like scraping a wall or something um, and you're going to need some tools you're going to need the t25 uh, torx wrench and uh, you're going to need some way of containing lead shot if you need to remove it from the nose cap and uh, also you might need to put a little bit of lead shot back in so it's good to have some um, today we actually ended up using a scale which, uh, thank goodness, we had one laying around um, because the trick we learned with the clips. So you can kind of help to make things a little bit more trim and neutral that way. Um, right now, though, as it sits, we're done testing. Uh, this is actually about as trim and neutral as it's going to get for the moment uh, until we decide to add any kind of accessories or anything like that then we might have to revisit this and and do the process all over again like I said you want it to be set up the way that you're gonna dive it 
or else doing all this is just kind of for nothing because if you do all this and then go throw a light on it it's going to be out of trim again so um this is how we're planning on diving it for the time being um but i did promise you guys i was going to show you about these foam uh inserts here like i said i just used the uh, foam padding like you'd use for a home gym um, I've went ahead and cut a square out and all that I do here is I take a marker and you'll see you'll see there are ridges in the shroud around the prop I just line this up mark it out And then I'll trim a piece to be about the length that I want. And it doesn't have to be pretty, it just needs to work. So I'll trim the piece out and then I will actually take some brake clean fluid spray it on the back once my brake cleans dry i'll take some super glue and apply it in the middle of these ridges where the foam insert is going to sit and then i'll stick the foam there press it hold it for about 30 seconds or so and uh then bob's your uncle you you can do as many as you need or as few as you need as you can see on this one i've only got one and it worked out perfect. Um, not all black tips are the same, not every DPV is the same. So for instance, on my personal DPV, I've got uh, five. I've got two on this side, two on this side, and one in the middle. Um, and that's what it took to get mine to uh, sit, you know, trim in the water. So, you know, it works out differently for different DPVs, but the, the method is the same. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Um, let me know if you have any questions, um, if you need any help with anything, uh, if you have any particular issues. I mean, I am by no means an expert at this, but I've done it a couple times and uh, I'm just kind of trying to share what I know because uh, information on exactly step by step how to do this stuff is pretty scarce. Um, so I'm a visual learner, so I decided to make videos on it. Um, I hope you like it. I hope it helped. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks for watching, guys.